Hi, welcome back to High Desert Gardening. My name is Jay Bell and I'm here to help you get set up for growing in the high desert. Today is my second episode. We're going to be talking about soil and what makes us different from other growing conditions, other parts of the world. For example, our pH, it is primarily alkaline. Uh, our lack of organic matter in our soil we have sand and clay and very little organic matter and I want to talk to you about why and why that matters for your garden and your growing experience. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit about the microbiome in your soil. I mean, if you, you may not know, but your soil is as much a living thing as your, as your plants. And if you don't have good soil, you're not going to have a garden. Um, and then I also want to talk to you a little bit about container gardening and you know how that's different in, in the southwest because we don't have rain. So we're going to talk about the precipitation, how that affects our soil conditions. Hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll have a better understanding of what our requirements are, why they look different, and how you can use that understanding to your advantage going forward and make educated choices for your growing conditions. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is pH. pH is a scale and uh, right around seven is neutral. What does that mean, Jay? Explain to me why alkaline versus acid soil matters. The nutrients in the soil that you are planting your plants in is only dissolvable within a certain range of pH. Copper, zinc, boron, manganese, you know, these are not things that we normally think about, but they're essential to plant health. If it gets too acidic, you wind up with too much, basically a toxicity of these particular micronutrients. Um, but if you are on the other side of that and say you have a soil pH of 8.5 and your zinc doesn't actually dissolve into the soil in the manner that your plants can access, uh, then you're not going to ha you're going to have a zinc deficiency in your plant, and that will show up in various ways depending on what your nutrient is that you're deficient in. So maintaining the pH in your soil according to what you're trying to grow is really important. Vegetables like an acidic soil, and typically an ideal acidic soil range is a 5.5 to 7.5 pH. But in Albuquerque and surrounding areas, our typical pH ranges from 6.5 up all the way to 8.4, which is incredibly alkaline. Now, that's great if you want to grow roses, but it's really going to hamper you when you're trying to grow, you know, your prized tomatoes or winter squash, um, simply because, yeah, the plant will grow potentially, but it's not going to be healthy enough to actually produce fruit. So it's always a really good idea to invest your money up front on your soil. You know, whatever that looks like, whether it's, you know, a small planter box once a year or you do your entire yard in that in that manner. I know a lot of people that live on the on the west side where it's really hard sand and clay and you know, it's really hard to resuscitate that without, you know, a lot of work and we all work. We have families uh, you know, who's got time for that. So one of the best methods you can do is to actually import your soil and put them in raised, raised beds. That said, if you want to grow in our native soil, you absolutely can, but you need to have organic matter and organic matter is not something New Mexico does well. Now let's talk about the three aspects of what makes a good soil. Okay. The first one is going to be your clay which is great at holding moisture, but bad at holding air. It smothers plants. The next one is going to be sand. That's great at draining water. It doesn't hold water, but it allows for a, a fair amount of, of aeration. So your plants can breathe because plants do breathe from the roots. They're not that different from us. So if you plant a plant in, in clay, it's going to drown. It doesn't get any oxygen, it gets plenty of water. If you plant a plant in sand, it's going to have plenty of air, but not enough water. Now, there is a binding third ingredient that allows you to build that soil in a way that requires less work and provides the acidity that you need for vegetables or other flowers and also allows you to, you know, not have to water as much because it, it retains the moisture. And that third ingredient is called organic matter. If you ever go to a, a forest, 
you'll notice that the entire forest floor is coated with you know, pine needles, leaves, everything from, you know, generations back that has been slowly breaking down on the soil. That is organic matter. Here are the two main reasons we don't have organic matter in our soil. The first is wind. The second is lack of moisture. Our winds can guess up to 75 miles an hour, and that carries all that plant material away with it. This leaves us with base or alkaline soil, and that's why we have poor nutrient absorption. The good news is, is that if you're trying to amend your soil quickly for the growing season, you can do it pretty easily starting around December or January. My father-in-law, for example, is on the west side. He had a patch of ground where it was just sand that he had been tilling for years with no success growing. We came in with some peat moss, which I'm not usually a big fan of, but in this case it was necessary to help acidify the soil, increase moisture content. Um, we brought in uh, a lot of compost, and then we brought in some good topsoil, just a little bit. And then at the very, after letting that sit for a while, we came in with a huge load of cow and sheep manure, and then just layered that on top by like several inches, and just let that sit for about two months. And that was literally all we did. We just layered it, kind of following a lasagna garden ideal. And then um, we just, I just had him plant directly into that. He had a really great season last year. He grew like crazy last year. And this year, his soil, if you dig down, is actually deeper than what we originally put in. So the microorganisms are beginning to build all by themselves. We didn't do a whole lot of extra work. So it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't even have to be particularly expensive if you're willing to find your materials, you know, spend some time. Usually the places that will sell you bulk compost or topsoil or a combination of like 50-50, they will deliver it to you, but they won't put it in your beds for you. You can pick up your own soil from these bulk locations. It will save you some money, anywhere from $20 to $50. Uh, it's a great option if you have the means. If you have a small bed and you don't need that much soil, or maybe you just don't have the means to get that much soil, you can go to any of our garden centers or a you know, plant nursery in town, and they will sell you soil or compost in a bag that you can put into a trunk in a car and take it home without having to find someone with a truck or have someone pay someone to deliver it to you. Adding organic matter to your soil is a great way to make sure that you're going to continue to have the nutrients that you need year in and year out for your growing conditions. I wanna be clear though, that it's not just a one-time thing. Soil is a process, it is not a product. Growing native and naturalized plants in our environment is a different conversation than the one that we're having here right now. So don't amend your soil if you're trying to grow succulents outside or lavender or something of that sort. You don't need to. But if you're trying to grow anything like fruit trees or vegetables or even some you know, decorative flowers, tulips, they all need a richer soil. They need more organic matter in the soil. We need to talk about organisms, in particular microorganisms. So tiny little life forms that are in your soil. The microorganism or the microbiome in your soil is what keeps it alive. And soil is not a dead thing. It is very much a living thing that you have to foster if you want to have a good garden. And this is where I first failed. And this is where a lot of people I know first fail because they treat the soil as just a place to stick the plants and the plants are the living thing. It's not the case at all. Your soil is your first plant that you have to take care of before you can put anything in it. To be clear, the microorganisms in your soil are everything from bacteria, beneficial bacteria, to nematodes, which are tiny little worms, all the way up to you know small, small bugs like flea beetles on up. And then those eventually feed, you know, you've heard of the ecosystem and the, and you know, you, you know, the bird eats the bug and the bug eats another bug. You know, that's exactly what you're trying to build is you're building an ecosystem in your soil and your plants are part of that. And trying to grow your garden without the ecosystem is folly because your plants have evolved to grow with these helpers. Now, how do these helpers help? For example, there's a type of fungus that grows in your soil that it almost looks like a spider web, a white spider web in your soil. If you've ever dug up your soil and you find little what looks like roots in a spider web, it's not, it's not roots necessarily. That could very well be fungus. 
And, and what that does is this amazing thing where it helps your plants actually communicate with each other. And it's turned out that they actually help each other sometimes. So you have this soil with, with a city of microorganisms that you're trying to support. So now you've got this really great microbiome in your soil, right? Your soil is alive. It's great. You've been working on it all season. Your plants grew beautifully and you had all the fruit, all the vegetables, and you're thinking you're pretty good about now. And then winter comes and like a lot of us, including me, winter comes and it's like <sighs> break time. You know, you just want to go inside and, you know, do the holidays or whatever you celebrate and, and enjoy your quiet time and not have to go outside and worry about your soil. So what happens is in a lot of cases, people just leave the garden fallow. And I mean, I get it, I do get it. But here's the thing, you know, when you go to the bathroom in a public place and they have those hand dryers and they have that blue, those blue light of the UV and it's supposed to kill the bacteria on your hands. That also works with the sun. So in the winter, what happens is you have our UV rays you know, cooking down on top of our unprotected soil. And now guess what? You have an antibacterial light treatment on the surface of your soil. So our sun and our wind, our extreme winds, which blow off that top layer of soil. You know, a lot of you may have experienced, well, I had a bunch of soil and now it's half the soil it used to be. It's half the soil it used to be. Anyways you have half the soil that you used to have and you're trying to figure out where it all went and why it's not growing. Well, you've baked all of the, the bacteria out of it and now you've lost half of it and now you have to replace it and that gets expensive. So what can you do? Mulch, 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 mulch. I know there's a lot of people who don't like mulching for lots of reasons. We can talk about that later, but ultimately if you want to preserve the health of your, of your garden soil, you need to find some way to cover it without baking it. Like don't put a tarp over it because that's almost as bad in our heat, even in the winter, but you know, some way to cover it and keep it from being blown away by the sun, by, by the wind and keep it from being baked by our sun. Now let's talk growing in containers. There's two main things that you need to know about growing in a container. The first thing is, is that your soil is going to be different. You want to make sure you're using a, a potting soil and not just a topsoil, not just d dirt from your ground. Two reasons, you need to have better drainage for a pot and you need to have built in nutrients like fertilizer. I'm going to suggest that you stick with just a pre-mixed potting mix for if you're growing, you know, to particular types of plants. Now this in particular case is not the best example. This is a citrus. It needs a like, really acidic soil. Our water is alkaline, so I have to treat the soil in this a little differently so that it doesn't become alkaline every time I water it. Um, there's a whole process, but we're going to use this as a visual aid. Um, I would normally use just a basic potting soil mix. I will plant my plant in that and water it, but you need to make sure that you're watering your container gardens you know, especially in high summer, once or twice a day, depending on how hot it is, how big your pot is. Now, if you're growing something like cactus or some kind of succulent, you're probably gonna want some kind of a cactus soil, which you can pick up at any box store or nursery. And it just basically means that it has more sand and more, much more ability to filter the water more quickly as opposed to holding on to the water so that the roots rot. You can actually grow multiple plants in the same pot. So I could grow lettuce and herbs in the same pot and they'd be great. But I probably wouldn't mix certain other things. Like I wouldn't put mint in with other herbs because guess what? That mint is gonna take over. So that's one consideration. Uh, another one is, is that I probably would not grow aloe vera in the same pot as lettuce. Uh, you know, lettuce needs way more moisture than an aloe vera does. So these are things to take into consideration if you're going to be gardening in containers for whatever reason, whether your soil's bad or you don't have a lot of time. That wraps us up for this super brief tour of soil in Albuquerque. There's so much to know, but I hope that this helped open the door to understanding concepts like pH, organic matter, microorganisms, and container gardening. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notification of my next video on why full sun doesn't really mean full sun for our plants in Albuquerque. Thanks for watching. See you next time.